Right, we're live yet. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. It's the time now. Fire to throw, so nearly the afternoon. It's lovely and bright out today. It's a beautiful day, and it's been bright enough for the last few days. That's what we need. Plenty of light in our darkness. The light will always shine over the dark. But anyway, guys, I hope everyone's having a good day, having a nice weekend, and you're staying safe, etc. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for the comments on um, my post, my podcast with Sean Atwood. The comments have absolutely blown me away. Um, it's gone up to over 35,000 K views and it's still climbing, so I really appreciate all the feedback what you guys are giving me. It's inspiring me and that's what's making me continue on to my journey. So, um, a few days ago, I had a guy from the Lab Bible uh, ring my phone and ask me, if you'd like me to go on to his show, um, I've got over 45 million subscribers and I do documentaries, so it is a, a massive platform for me. Um, basically, it was, it was up in um, Bethnal Green, Victoria, Victoria Park it was. Um, so I took up Marlin Road and, and that lot. But as you as you guys know, I've moved away to West Sussex, so it was like 140 miles away, and it was Friday. I had to be there at four o'clock, so the traffic. I, it was just horrendous, I mean horrendous. But the actual interview took place in Victoria Park, in the middle of the park. All the COVID um, rules was applied. We had masks on, um, etc. gloves and wipes, and we was following all the, all the COVID guidelines, so that's all good. So yeah, um, basically when I got to the park, it's a big massive park, I felt completely lost. Um, I didn't know where I was, my, hundreds of miles away from home, <coughs> all on my own. So I'm sitting down um, waiting for the, uh, the producers and the directors to come and meet me in the park. Um, they said just hang about in the, in the front of the park and I'll notice them they'll have high-vis coats on. So yes, a young lady called Sam come and met me. Um, we had a little chat. She uh, bought me a cup of coffee. We sat down at the bench and we had about 20 minutes to wait. So basically we was having a little chat and I've gone over my life stories and things like that with her. She was in so anyway, all of a sudden, I see a black guy walking along um, the pathway, and something drew me to this guy. I don't know what it was, but I just jumped up off the middle of the bench and started walking towards this guy. He had a bald head, a motorbike helmet in his hands. He was all in leathers, so he was obviously on a motorbike. Well, at at, the, at that time, I looked at. I actually walked up to him. He must have thought I was crazy, but I did. I walked up to him. And I said, I've been, I've been wanting to meet you for so long. Um, we've crossed paths many, many times in jail. And it's just amazing how we've just come across each other. And it turned out to be fish. So, yeah, we jumped onto a podcast in a few days' time together. Um, Crash Bang as father is a fucking blinder. Absolutely lovely guy. Um, so we sat down for around about an hour, probably, um, having a chat and having a bit of banter talking about the good old days, talking about prisons and big names and who we know and basically like we know each other's mates, um, very well connected the pair of us so we had a lot in common um, and yeah so I had a good chat with uh, Fish for about an hour cuddling each other and all the rest of it he's, he's a lovely fella you know um, he couldn't stop shaking my hands, he was really happy to see me and I was happy to see him and it's like we connected, you know, we connected old school, meeting old school and that's the way it was. So, you know, we embraced each other because we've both got a very, very, very bad past. Well anyway, that went really well. Um, but I didn't know at that time, but um, Fish had just been onto the uh, podcast, oh, Lad Bible, sorry. And it was it was being filmed on the middle of the park in Victoria Park. So uh, Fish said his goodbyes, and the uh, film producer come up to me, the directors come up to me, asked him to follow him, and they walked onto the middle of the middle of the common. Uh, there was like a little marquee, massive cameras, um, film crew, sound crew. There was probably about 25 members of their crew. Um, so basically, it was an interview for me to go onto Lad Bible. Um, I think the first question was um, regret. So 
they asked me what I regret and obviously my number one regret was that sorry that side on the side of my face that was a, a very very big thing for me to uh, to bring that up because obviously I had it many years ago um, not too many people know why I had to have that tattoo on the side of my face but basically um, I had to change my I had to change my appearance and and also I was having it to put an end to all my crimes um, because I knew that once I had that on my face I was so distinguished distinguished and so easily recognised that maybe that would stop me from going across the pavement and going back to committing armed robberies and actually it did um, so yeah is it is a negative and a positive to it um, you know I've learned to live with it over the years I'm very aware of I get stereotyped um, everywhere I go and looked at like me and my missus might be going to a restaurant it might be say 30 people in a restaurant and the minute I walk through the door <coughs> people actually drop their knives and forks and turn around and look at me um, so yeah that's that's because of the, the tattoo so over the years I've had to learn how to work with it you know and not get too paranoid because when I first got it I must confess the first few years uh, there was people looking at me and I was confronting them and saying what are you looking at you know and fights are happening and I did have a few scruffles at, in the early days of uh, having my tattoo on my face but I've had it for like 20 years now so yeah I learned to live with it and actually I'm using it now for my advantage you know because the people what I'm meeting now is so far away from the people what I used to hang about with it is unbelievable um, I never imagined that I'd be working with such people of greatness um, so yeah I've, I've done the interview on the part um, my number one regret was the tattoo on my face and then we went on to number two which was confessions and my confession was um, that obviously <coughs> I'm a former armed robber I'm an ex-criminal uh, I'm gang affiliated I come out of a gang and um, when I met my partner Sam over 11 years ago you know she knew what I was all about but um, her family wasn't aware of my backgrounds and my criminal activity so I tried to hide it for many many years um, from them so my confession was that um, that you know my past is my past and I was a criminal but now I'm not a criminal um, I've changed my life around you know um, <coughs> I haven't been arrested since 2010 as you guys know um, I've been on Sean Atwood's podcast um, I've done a few bits and pieces, uh, radio stations and bits like that. I've also written and published my first book, which is on Amazon. <coughs> I'll put the link in the description below this video. It's called The South London Forster Boys Towers. I released it probably about six months ago. It's, it's gone absolutely crazy, it's flying off the shelves. Um, I'm just amazed of how many people's bought it, you know, and how many people I've inspired. I've never ever thought my wildest dreams. I've inspired so many people. The feedback what I've got off that is fucking unreal. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. A uh, big, big shout out to Eileen Smith, our friend, um, who we're very, very close to. And now and then, when things ain't going too well, you know, we we talk to each other and lift lift um, each other up. And she talks to my missus Sam. Um, we get on really, really great. And I'd just like to give a big shout out to Eileen Smith. Thank you very much for everything what you do. Um, you're so kind with me and, my, me and both my partner we both love you thank you very much so that's that out of the way so and, and also I'd like to give a shout out to all my family um, obviously the ones what's been there through thick and thin all of, of my life from day one dot one you know um, especially Pamela you know and Robert my sister and my brother-in-law um, for instance when I got that big sentence and I was around the local jails in London so Pentonville the scrubs uh, higher down, Belmarsh, you know, all them local shitholes, you know, all my family, a few, a good few of my family members, members will come up visiting me, which was really, really nice. But um, eventually, I had to learn, I had to move to a long term as jail, um, and that was miles away. One minute I was in um, Dovegate, which is in Birmingham, then I was in Whitemore, which is in fucking Cambridge, then I was in Long Larton, it's <coughs> miles away. And it was Pamela and Robert. They were the main ones which was actually coming over, having to book up in bed and breakfasts just to stay over because the journey was that long that they couldn't they couldn't like come up and drive back the same day. So massive respect for you. I love you dearly and I'll be seeing you later on for a cup of tea anyway. And also to my auntie Margaret, um 
my mum and sister who I love so dearly she's very very close to me um, she's had some devastating news over the last few years um, I'm not too sure if you guys are aware of it but um, <coughs> she lost young George a couple of years ago um, he sadly passed away of an heart attack um, in his early 40s uh, so before that it was Mark Marky Boo my first cousin my cousin I loved him so much it was Mark what got took away um, in an accident so he was the first one to pass away um, and then George, young George, he was only 42, he died a few years ago um, he suddenly passed away of an heart attack so Margaret had that to deal with, her two sons and then um, not long after her husband, which was my uncle George um, who I spoke about on the first podcast, um, he was a roofer he passed away um, in the, over the last year um, so so sad you know and she's been through so much unhappiness um, I'm just I just like to send out my healing prayers and all my love and just to let you know Margaret that I'm here and I always will be here and you know anything you ever want anytime you ever need me I'm only a phone call away so big love out to Margaret <coughs> also I would like to put a massive massive Thank you and give, well, give a massive thank you to my partner Sam, the one who's actually stood by me for the last 11 years. Um, <coughs> she's been through hell and back with me when we first got together. You know, we both had our problems, um, but over the years we've grown, we've grown stronger and stronger and stronger. We're inseparable now. We go everywhere together, um, and we're each other's soulmates. And she's she's standing by me all the way um, so a massive thank you to my Mrs Sam Smith I love you very much dear you know that anyway guys back to um, Victoria Park and the Lab Bible so I finished off um, on confession and the confession was obviously that I was a ex armor but I was a criminal um, and that was it um, it was over and done with but the casting crew was very nice to me uh, very kind you know um, and they really appreciated um, me going down Doing a little, doing a little speech for these guys, and um, as you know, it's all voluntary. You know, um, I pay for it out of my own pocket, so it's not for gain. This is more for awareness, um, mainly aimed at the younger generation. You know, um, the story is, um, you know, crime is not glamorous. Um, it's far from glamorous. It takes you to some dark places, some deep seas. You meet people that you don't want to meet. You go to places that you don't want to go, and it all ends up in tears you end up in prison with a very big long prison sentence and it's the ones outside what you're leaving outside and also going through it um, while you're doing that sentence so, and and also it takes a special type of a person to actually get through them big double figure sentences what I've got through um, I didn't you know it wasn't easy getting through that sentence um, I went to the pits of hell you know um, I was in segregation blocks for many many years in different different prisons but that's another story we talk about um and there's quite a lot of it in my first book anyway so yeah guys this is just a little video just to put out to upload to my youtube channel as you know i'm building on it i'll be uploading bits and pieces on every day um a quick update before i do go um for those that watched my uh, podcast with sean atwood the part one great news for you guys i've completed part two and it's with sean so you know within the next week or so it'd be online um and in part two there is some very hard hitting stories um, some funny bits some emotional bits there's a bit of everything in there but um a bit of corruption you know from prison officers officers screws um bits like that so it's going to be great and i promise you now it's going to keep everyone right on the edge of their fucking chair and that's where they want to be when they're watching someone like me so have a great day everyone peace out much love.